And let me now call the second keynote speaker, speaker James A. Rogers, Director of Global Sustainable Electricity Partnership, who will speak about strategies and goals of the Global Sustainable Electricity Partnership. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. You have no video clip for us, have you? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. I am delighted to be in Vienna, delighted to be here at the R20 conference and to be part of this very important discussion. I'm also delighted to look out and see the U.S. Ambassador to Austria here, Bill Eco. I suspect, and he is the brother of a very close friend of mine in the States, I suspect he is here in the event that I say something provocative that creates an international incident. <laughs> so uh, I'm well protected in that event. I wear two hats. I am the chairman and CEO of Duke Energy. Duke is the largest electric utility in the United States. We provide electricity in six states. We provide renewable energy to 23 states. And to give you a sense of our size, we operate roughly 60 gigawatts. Now, a way to think about that is if we were ranked as a country, we would be ranked number 14th of all countries in the world, given the amount of generation that we own. So because of our ownership of generation so large, we have a special responsibility to address the carbon issue going forward. Our mission is to provide affordable, reliable, increasingly clean electricity in safe and sustainable ways 24-7, 365 days a year. We try hard to get the balance right between affordability, reliability, and clean. And we have a portfolio approach. What does that mean? We generate electricity from our energy efficiency investments, as we think is a fuel, but we also from coal, from gas, and from nuclear. Now, I know it's unpopular because I've listened to the comments with respect to nuclear, but we're one of the largest operators of nuclear in the US. And an important way to think about the role of nuclear in the U.S., it represents roughly 70% of our carbon-free electricity in our country. And it's critical to our ability to move forward. But I'll share with you one important point, is in the U.S., both on the supply side as well as on the demand side, we have been able to reduce our CO2 emissions to our 1992 level and on a per capita basis back to 1960. And we've done this without national legislation. We've done it with technology, we've done it with innovation. On the supply side, that's all about shale gas and the deployment of shale gas, the displacement of coal, the increased operation of our nuclear plants, that combination coupled with significant investments in renewables, wind and solar, has given us the ability on the supply side to change our mix. On the demand side, we've invested in changing people's behavior, which is quite difficult in the US because the average consumer pays about 1.7% of its total disposable income for electricity. So to change behavior, but also, and this is the great promise, is the deployment of new technologies because it's technologies, whether it's home energy management, whether it's software in terms of maximizing the efficient use of electricity, all of that is very important. I say this to really frame the other hat that I'm wearing, which is the hat as the chairman of the Global Sustainable Electricity Partners, or GSEP. This is an organization that's made up of 14 companies that produce 30% of the electricity in the United States. 
One of our missions is to provide electricity to developing countries. We have been in operation 21 years, and we've had projects throughout the world, most recently wind on the Galapagos Islands, off the coast of Ecuador, uh, wind and run of river hydro in Argentina, in the Patagonia area. So we've had multiple projects around the world, and our mission is to help bring electricity to the 1.3 billion people who have no access. Now let me take a moment and talk a little bit about that. Yesterday, you heard from Mr. Umkela from the UN, and I've worked with him quite a bit. And because the UN has had a very clear focus on providing sustainable electricity to all the people in the world and quite frankly, as you think through it and try to understand the problem and, and then develop the approach to solve it, it really breaks into two groups. One is really the rural communities and the solutions there are quite different than in the urban areas where you're trying to improve the reliability, displace some of the generation, improve the transmission and the distribution in those city centers. Our focus has been more on the rural areas. We uh, have made a commitment, this is GSEP, to deploy 50,000 solar lanterns. What does that mean? That means people have the capability to use their solar lantern to charge their cell phone. I mean, I was in Kenya a couple years ago and in a village, a number of cell phones in the village, but to charge them, they had to walk three to four hours. So here, with a solar lantern, they can actually charge it every day. But the other important thing, electricity is really critical. We've, we have forgotten in the developed world what life was like without electricity. Over 100 years ago, when we started bringing electricity and universal access to electricity in the United States, we never envisioned what it would enable. We couldn't envision that it would enable refrigeration or it would enable radio or in the, in the medical area, x-rays, MRIs, laser surgery. We never envisioned computers. We never envisioned the internet. But without electricity, none of that's possible. And for these 1.3 billion people in the world, they need access. Because access to electricity puts them in a position to solve water issues, health issues, the ability to learn, the ability to connect to the world, the ability to raise their standard of living, not just in this generation, but in future generations. So our focus is GSEP, and we represent, as I said, 14 companies, all with this mission, and these companies are located in Japan, South Africa, and Brazil, the US, Canada, Germany, France, Italy, Spain. So we represent a very broad-based group of companies who deploy electricity in their regions. And our mission is really led by our executive director, um, Martin Provo, who is here in the audience. And we had, there she is, what she is doing is she has joined the board of the R20. Christoph Newtall met with us. We signed an agreement, but we signed an agreement because we want to take action going forward. I have a point of view because I come from the private sector. My point of view is if NGOs and corporations and foundations and academic institutions work together, we can lead on these issues of bringing electricity to the rural areas of the world. And as a consequence of that, governments will follow. I'll give you one quick story. When I was at the World Economic Forum a week ago, we had an opportunity to meet with former Prime Minister Tony Blair, the head of the USAID, presence a number of African countries. And we sat around the table and talked about how do we best do this? How do we best develop a plan, specific actions for the rural communities 
as well as the cities in these countries in Africa. So we are going to work to bring technologies. And let me share with you, the solar lantern is just a step, a small step, in giving them a greater capability. But on the heels of that, what you will see is the development of microgrids in these villages that are driven by solar, but also battery technologies deployed. And you should, you are probably saying, why would a company that is providing electricity, and our company does it ju not just in the US, but also in Latin America, where our operations is primarily hydro and primarily in Brazil, Argentina, and Peru. Why would we do this? From a business standpoint, we see the opportunity of what I call reverse innovation. As we deploy microgrids in these regions, it will give us insights with respect to how to change the grid in the developed world. The number one problem we face is cyber attack. Cybersecurity is an issue that all generators, operators of electric grids have to confront. At the end of the day, by deploying microgrids in these rural communities, we will jumpstart our thinking in terms of how to redesign our grids in the developed world to be able to provide reliable electricity protected from any cyber attack. So there is a business reason, but there's also another reason. One, it is the right thing to do. So if we come together, if we collab collaborate, bring our best capabilities into these countries, we can transform their way of life. We can transform the future. And we all know that in the 21st century, water is going to be the next oil. And by bringing electricity to these regions, we will be able to address the water issue, which will be so critical to the future of the people of our planet, and not just in developing countries, but as well as in the developed world. So GCEP has come together, working with R20. It's just one example, but at the end of the day, if we work in a collaborative way, we will bring the major governments, we will bring the capital necessarily, necessary to make it a reality that there will be electricity for all and a better life tomorrow. Thank you all very much.